Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me in a new video. Honestly, it's been a while since I uploaded more than a month, I think. And I'm back now. I was busy moving, so I have moved all my stuff, my studio, into a new house and it's all set up now. So I can start doing videos again. So today I have a cat, um, cat eye tutorial in real time in colored pencil for you. So it's a long one, but I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, I know you guys don't always like the super sped up fast tutorials. So a real time one this time and I hope you'll enjoy it. The whole process is available on my Patreon. So the whole drawing of the cat and also I've never mentioned it yet here, but I do personal coaching as well on Patreon. So I have a few spots left available. I give you personal advice on your work through email throughout the whole month, if you want to, whenever you want to. So that's also a thing to consider if you want me to guide you through your own work. So I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, all the colors I mentioned in the video. And but if you have any questions, let me know. So the eyes are greenish, but not very vibrant green. So I picked some greens that I will probably be using in the eyes, which are earth green, a bluish, bluish, grayish green, then earth green, yellowish. These will combine very well. Then I have chromium green opaque which is a bit darker but also more to the bluish side and then i have dark thalo green which is more a vibrant more of a vibrant green and i won't be using this one so much but um to give it an extra touch of vibrancy i might use a little bit of this one then in the highlight of the eye i see some blue so i'm using light thalo blue and then of course we have the darker eyelids and I don't see a lot of black there, but I do see some brown and some purple as well. So I will be using walnut brown and I will be using Caput Mortem Violet, one of my favorite colors and maybe some dark indigo as well. And for the very darkest parts, some black. So that will be my color choice for the eyes. So I do want to make sure that the pencils are very sharp as it is uh, quite a detailed but also small area. So for sharpening, I'm using again my one of my favorites. This is the Faber-Castell Color Grip Universal with three different holes so what i always like to do first is outline the eye to make sure that the shapes are correct and then i can start filling in the iris so i'm going to start off with some walnut brown make sure it's very sharp on the paper i use is Kenson 1557 as always and I'm using the Faber-Castell Polychromos I will also be using some Caran d'Ache Oh, I think I will be using this one as well. This is Raw Umber 10% from Caran d'Ache. In combination with the greens to tone down the green, make it a little less vibrant. Right, let's get the eyes in frame. Then I'm going to start out with outlining the eyes. And I'm not using very tight lines here at the top. And I'm also using very little pressure. And here we can see the fur that's overlapping the inner corner of the eye. So I'm already adding some hairs there. So it will be easier to create that effect later on. And then also here, 
all these transitions need to be very natural. So this is the bottom eyelid and then we have the iris which is more of a tighter line here. Let's do the other eye as well, so that I can decide right away whether the shapes are correct, and if they are more or less symmetrical. Have some overlapping hairs here. So I'm not pushing hard because I want to be able to go over with black later on. This cat has very pretty fur. Very warm tones in the fur as well. So now I can already compare the two eyes, see if the shapes are correct compared to each other. And yeah, I think I'm going to adjust the shape of this one a little bit. Keep looking at your own drawings, see where you can adjust the shapes if it's necessary. Alright. Then I also want to draw in, sketch in the shape of the pupil with the same brown. Going to draw around the highlights. Alright, so this cat is looking down a, a little bit, it's not looking right towards us. Alright, now I want to fill in the eyelids. I always like to put in the darkest areas first and then do the lightest areas based on the darkness of the surrounding areas. 
and I'm going to start off with black I think uh, mostly for the inner corners of the eyes which are very dark I am going to be quite careful with where I place my black. I also want to make sure that I still go in the right direction with my strokes. I'm only going to use the black in the places where I don't see any other color. Also here with these overlapping brown hairs, I'm going to make sure that I keep the texture there by drawing my strokes in the direction of those brown hairs. Alright, that's all the black I'm using for now on this eye. Moving on to the other side. Starting in the inner corner where it's the very darkest. So I really want these eyes to pop they are such an important part of the portrait, so um, I'm all for using black because I want to get a very high contrast.
outlining the eyelids with black only where it's the very darkest and then I'm going to fill in the center of the eyelids with purple, brown and some blue to get the nice color in there but I'm going to focus on the contrast first All right, let's start adding some color now. I'm going to take a cup of Morton Violet, sharpen it. I'm going to start adding it on the eyelids. Pressing more in the areas where it's the darkest, but here, for instance, where it's a little bit lighter, I'm going to add very little pressure. And also here. I'm going to add some of that. always like adding Caput Morton Violet in dark fur, especially black fur. It creates a very nice base tone for black fur. Gives it a lot more depth than just using black or brown. And then the other eye. Also putting down some Violet. And also adding it to the eyelid, a bit darker here in the corner. And then a bit lighter here towards the outside. Maybe a little bit here on top. Then, apart from purple, I also see blue, so I'm going to use dark indigo. And these two together, dark indigo and Capone Morton Violet, create a really nice dark brown. So 
So I'm going to add it on top. Create some more darkness. Here in the center we have a lighter area, so I'm going to draw around that. So this is just a very nice way to create a very dark, vibrant brown using blue and purple. Take it to the other side as well. Making sure that you always follow the flow of the hairs. Draw them in the right direction, even in the inner corners of the eye or in these dark patches. All right. Then I want to add a little bit of walnut brown for some extra brown. Let's go back to black, darken up the very darkest areas a little bit more, not too much. And then with the white, with the white current dash, I want to do some burnishing. I'm going to burnish only on these lighter outer edges to blend the colors together. Maybe a little bit here on these lighter edges as well, lighter parts. I don't want to lighten up any of the very dark areas, so I'm going to not add any white there. Then I'm going to see what it needs after that, a little bit more purple. And then the eyelids are finished for now. Now it's time to move on to the iris.
So I can see a lot of different colors in the irises. Um, it's mostly green. But I can also see some warm beige. So I'm going to combine those colors. Let's adjust the shape a little bit more. Okay, so along the outer edges of the iris, you can see some brown. For that, I'm going to use Caput Mortem. So we have Caput Mortem Violet here, which is more purplish. Then Caput Mortem, which is more reddish. So this is more to the brownish side. I'm going to use this one and use it just on the very edges of the iris so there needs to be enough depth in the iris so the edges are darker and the center is going to be lighter otherwise it will just be very flat This way I can also make it blend in with the darkness of the eyelids as well. Here on the bottom some veins. Let's draw those in as well. Just very lightly sketching. On the other side, doing the same. Just a little bit though. Very important to not overdo it with cat eyes, especially not with colored pencil. We don't want to have any muddy colors in the air. Let's add some walnut brown. This inner corner is just very dark. Alright, let's get started with the greens now. So I want to start off light and let's see what to start with. So as a base tone, I see more of a yellowish undertone than green. So I'm going to start off with more beige 
colors and that will be Raw Umber 10% from Caran d'Ache and I'm basically going to work from the outside towards the inside so I'm also going to leave the um, pupil for last going to take it around the edges of the raw umber 10% it's a really nice yellow tone making sure to not mix it with the black because that will create a muddy tone Taking it to the other side. And this inner corner is a bit darker, so I'm adding a little more pressure there. Not too much. And I also make sure to always um, clean the tip. After I worked on a certain area, because if another color gets on the tip of the pencil and you put it on the paper again, you will get a, a stain, which is very hard to clean. Making sure to draw around the highlights. So now I want to add some more yellowish. Tone, so I'm going to add ivory. I'm going to add that on top of the raw umber. Just a little bit of that. Also can use it to blend the kaput mortem and the beige together. Alright, so let's leave it like this. Now it's time to add some green. I'm going to start off with the very lightest one, which is Earth Green, number 172. So it's very important to start working from light to dark in color pencil. I'm going to add it in the inner corner to give it more of a greenish tone there, although it's very dark. And I'm going to start at the top as well. My pressure is still very light. Now I'm going to edit on the edges a little bit as well. So it's all about mixing colors. Mixing and layering until you get the right effect. I'm also making sure to follow the shape of the eye. So um, Starting on the outside with my strokes and I'm working towards the inside.
working towards the pupil. Still making sure to draw around the highlights which aren't there yet but I'm going to create them by drawing around them. Looking at all the different shapes that I see in the eye. Taking it very slow. Going to take it to the other eye as well. I'm leaving open, open a little space around the pupil because I see some yellow there and I want to add that yellow without having to go on top of the green. Again, drawing around the highlight. All right, I think I want to hype up the amount of yellow, especially around the veins. So I'm going to go back in with ivory and add some more of that. Now it's time to continue building up the layers, adding some more vibrancy here and there. It's more of a yellow tone that I see around the pupil, so I think I'm going to use a little bit of ivory first around the pupil. I'm 
on both eyes and I'm going to add earth green yellowish on top. Adding that around the pupil to create that yellowish greenish looking strip around the pupil like that. That will make the pupil pop a lot more as well. Adding some more of that earth green yellowish here and there where I want the green to look a bit more vibrant. But I still want to keep the base tone light. This is still the base tone so I'm not focusing on the details yet and the textures. Just want to get that nice green base tone in <sighs> now it's time for more darkness so more contrast in the iris going to use the chromium green opaque for that I'm going to add that mostly at the top so where the fur is casting a shadow over the eyes that is usually the case and here as well Also working on adjusting the shape of the highlights a little bit. I'm going to take that down little bit working in small strokes and circular motions just making sure there are no harsh lines anywhere Working on those highlights, they don't have to be 100% equal to the reference photo, but they have to be in the right place. Now I'm also going to focus on creating some of those textures in the iris. So it's a very small area here but I can add some detail but I don't need to overdo it. Keeping it like this for now and I'm moving on to the other side. Still, I'm not pushing a lot. I'm 
creating the shape of the highlights here. Just drawing it in. And this whole inner corner is quite dark. So I'm going to use the chromium green opaque there to darken up the base layer here. But I'm still looking at where it's light and where it's dark. So where the lighter pieces are, I'm not going to put any chromium there. So even such a small area can take a long time. Depends on how detailed you want it. I want to add a little bit more darkness on the top, but I don't want to add any more green because that's going to be too green. So I'm going to pick some brown now. And I'm going to go for... Let's do a bit of walnut brown again. Just add that on top quite lightly to just darken this up without making it more green. There are also some veins here that I didn't put in yet, so I'm going to draw that in with walnut brown as well. Making sure to tighten the line between the eye and fur, fur above the eye. Taking it to the other side, darken up this vein here. Add some more darkness on top. Alright, so now I want to do a little bit of burnishing. 
Oh wait, let's suggest this a little bit. Right. Yeah, I want to do a little bit of burnishing, not too much, but I just want to blend the colors together. So I'm using small circular motions and I'm focusing on the center. I'm not pushing hard either. want to make it more of a hole. And make it a little bit smoother as well. Alright, so that's it. Now I want to start filling in the pupil and I want to do that with dark indigo first. So I'm not going in with black straight away because that's going to create a very flat pupil. They are never completely black. I, Especially in this one I see a little bit of a bluish hue and a bit of a lighter area as well. So I'm going to start off with a very light layer of dark indigo. Filling in the pupil with that, focusing on the shape, the other one as well. Then I want to add a very light layer of walnut brown to contrast the amount of blue there. Just a little bit, very light pressure. And finally I'm going to add black. Making sure to clean up the shape. Here in the center it's a little bit lighter so I'm going to leave it a little bit lighter. Now I can also really work on that highlight. And then do 
do the same on the other side. Now you get a lot more contrast in the eye and now based on the darkness of the pupil I can start finishing up the iris. do a little bit of burnishing in the center of the iris to create that lighter hue there. Alright, now I can see that parts of the iris can be darkened up. Circle around the iris here, adding some more earth green yellowish Hype up that vibrancy. Focusing on adding some more texture and detail. And the highlights here are interrupted by the shadows that the lashes are creating. So I also want to put more detail in the highlights. With chromium green opaque, I'm going to add those whiskers and those lashes. So those lashes are overlapping the highlights or the shadows of the lashes. Now I want to make sure that the area around the highlights is dark enough, otherwise the highlight won't stand out well.
bit more of that earth green to bring back that bluish greenish tone a bit more. And again, I don't want to overdo it, so I'm going to call this done soon. Just want to make sure that it has all the contrasts. And that everything is blended well. Going over once again with the white corn dash. And I also see in this eye a little bit of a, an orangey spot. So I'm going to put that in with. First, a little bit of sanguine, just a bit of orange there. Not sure what that is, maybe some damage in the eye. And then a little bit of Venetian red on top. To make it a bit more reddish, not too much, so just like that. Then blending it in with the white corn dash. It's very important that all the different colors come together to make it look like a realistic eye. So I'm just going back and forth now using some more Caput Mortem to hype up the vibrancy of the veins here and there. Also, I want to add some color to the highlights, so I'm going to use blue for that. This is light phthalo blue 145. A little bit of that, not too much, just a touch of that.
bringing out the shape of the highlights a little bit more by going around them with a little bit of walnut brown. And then just want to create some final shapes and textures. Making sure that I still keep um, the, the ivory and the raw umber 10% that I started out with. I don't want to cover that completely. Touch of blue. To bring out the bluish tone in the areas that I can also see. Just glazing that on top. And then I think I want to call the eye finish, the eyes. Alright, so that concludes this tutorial for today. I hope you've been able to watch it all through. It was a long one. Um, let me know if you like the real-time videos or if I should speed it up two or three times to make it a little bit faster. Let me know. So thank you so much for watching. There will be a studio tour soon, I hope, if it all uh, looks okay. It's still a bit empty in here. Maybe you can hear it as well. It's still a bit echoey. And um, yeah, let me know if you liked it. Give it a like if you liked it. Um, let's get my YouTube channel back on track again. It's been a bit neglected. So I want to get it back on track again. Do some live streaming as well. But yeah, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.